Hello and greetings for our first lesson on lateral loads and lateral load resisting systems. Uh, the, the two primary objectives in this brief lesson is really just to find out about the different types of these systems and the nature of how they respond to loads and the typical components within that system. That's going to help us to be able to trace the load path uh, as we go through that and it will be a lot more complicated in some ways than say gravity loads but in other ways it's actually simpler uh, because the components are fewer in number. Right, so your reference material here you'll have some notes here that go along with the lesson and then uh, there will be a couple of additional video links here for you uh, to see a few things. Before we get into the different types of systems let's just talk about what those systems are trying to respond to. Uh, for instance, we've the <clears throat> when we have extreme winds, um, we have to think about how the wind flows around the building and how that sets up windward pressures that comes from the sort of upstream side of the wind and as the wind flows across the building or over the building and sometimes even through the building in partially enclosed types of cases or in cases where we're going to consider that maybe during extreme events windows and that sort of thing may have been broken we have to think about how the wind flows through as well as around the building and so we end up with pressures on both sides the windward and the downstream side the leeward uh, side and that will get translated through usually tributary type action into uh, forces that are going to be concentrated at the roof level and then that will end up with these lateral forces into some level of base shear that we have to then uh, resist as well as potentially some upwards effects that are not shown in this simplistic view of wind forces. That's somewhat similar to what happens with uh, earthquakes and in earthquakes it's not so much an applied force as it is that we have ground shaking back and forth that is going to create then accelerations and those accelerations become then inertial forces and since the mass is predominantly um, located at the floor levels then we can consider that those seismic story forces are concentrated forces plus then we'll talk a little bit later about how the uh, forces on the side of the building uh, from inertial from say the, the acceleration of the wall cladding that sort of thing through tributary action will go up to the uh, floor levels just like we uh, talked about with the wind forces two more common types of lateral forces that our buildings are resisting or are just uh, regular structures or rather earth retaining type structures are going to be of course earth pressures retaining walls that's their sole purpose in life is to resist the effects of, of soil pressures those take the form of active and passive lateral earth pressures the magnitudes of those would be something you'd model or learn how to model in a a geotechnical class or a foundations class um, the structural person will be then interested in how do we proportion and design the wall itself to resist these uh, soil pressures these lateral uh, pressures um, these walls also are, have pressures that come from not just the soil but if water builds up at all then and that's not a good thing and we try to design the system so that it doesn't happen but if the water builds up hydrostatic pressures can be quite significant those fluid pressures also just from a static perspective we uh, create lateral pressures on big dams that's going to be a similar kind of effect as the retaining wall it's just really a scale difference uh, here but unlike the uh, the retaining wall where we don't want the hydrostatic pressure we of course um, are assuming that we're going to have that in the dam or we're going to have a very expensive uh, facility that doesn't do anything so of course that the whole point of the dam is to resist the hydrostatic uh, pressures but water can also create um, other issues as well uh, beyond just static kinds of issues when it's flowing past say in a marina or out in the ocean or in a river um, especially out in the ocean we have wave wind and current types of environmental forces the wave and the current are the fluid type forces um, that you see here and down below you see an example of what some of the two of these uh, well one of these offshore platforms might look like uh, this is actually a tension lake platform whereas the schematic is of a jacket platform and down here in the lower right is also a jacket platform all of these situations represent relatively common uh, situations where we have to deal with lateral loads <clears throat> 